And then Harold Schumann can tell us how specifically the ECB uh, works above and beyond monetary policy and influences um, economic policy in the member states. Uh, the ECB, of course, uh, is very proud of its independence and impartiality and maintains that it's not a political actor. Harald Schumann has shown time and again that that is not the case. He's uh, an investigative journal with the Tagesspiegel, and he became very well known in Germany during the Euro crisis um, when he was talking about uh, what the Troika uh, was up to and the way uh, German banks were secretly rescued by the government. And I have to say that a number of central bankers in the ECB uh, uh, run in horror at the mere mention of his name, so critical is he of the ECB. Uh, and as you know, uh, big bankers are normally very cool, calm individuals, but uh, this is a man who can uh, sow panic amongst their ranks. So I'm coming uh, down... Uh, Politik der EZB und ähm, weil ja vorhin der Fall Irland schon vorgetragen worden ist, lasse ich Irland mal außen vor. Das ist auch weit. The more shady areas. Uh, what is happening in uh, Greece and uh, Cyprus uh, is not actually that well known. Greece and uh, Cyprus are, are very closely linked. My contribution concludes that what happened during uh, the intervention in the crisis uh, in Greece and Cyprus uh, was actually very linked uh, to the ECB directors uh, and uh, the uh, board. Uh, they uh, took illegal decisions uh, which they shouldn't have been allowed to take. Trifft zum einen die Bankenaufsicht. This is to do with banking or supervision in both countries uh, and on the other hand uh, the arbitrary uh, blocking of emergency liquidity and funding, but both are very much linked. Uh, so you've got to start somewhere. So uh, I start with the PSI, the private sector involvement, uh, uh, the uh, debt intervention which was uh, delayed by two years. You remember that uh, 108 billion uh, euros uh, were uh, adopted by the uh, and this uh, uh, made all Greek banks insolvent, uh, and the Greek uh, government uh, had to uh, borrow another uh, set of uh, euros. Etwas Merkwürdiges. Mehrere Banken uh, several um, banks uh, were uh, liquidated, and four uh, banks uh, were going to remain. And uh, the smallest of these banks, the Piraeus Bank, uh, suddenly became the biggest. Die Zentral uh, because the central bank as the supervisory authority together with the conservative government um, tried to ensure that the Piraeus Bank uh, uh, got uh, all the assets uh, of the liquidated banks. So that's uh, the background. Uh, but uh, this did not just affect the Greek banks uh, and, of course, investors in other uh, areas of the world, but it affected the uh, two biggest banks uh, in Cyprus, the Laiki uh, Bank and the Bank of Cyprus. Uh, because of the debt intervention in Greece, uh, they lost uh, 10 or 14 million um, euros. We don't really know. Uh, unlike uh, Greece, though, uh, they uh, didn't uh, get any official loan from the government in order to recapitalize uh, but uh, in Cyprus, uh, this uh, led to, uh, to a special supervision of uh, the two banks because we had to examine who decided what, uh, who uh, decided that Cypriot banks uh, would buy uh, Greek loans. Uh, and the head of the Piraeus Bank in Athens uh, turned out to have... Uh, uh, used offshore uh, uh, accounts uh, in the names uh, of his children. Had, uh, he'd uh, taken over 100 million euros in loans uh, to uh, buy new uh, Piraeus shares uh, in order to increase their value vis-à-vis -vis the central bank. And during the examination, it turned out that these uh, loans, uh, private uh, loans, the family involved, and so on in uh, the uh, Likey Bank. Uh, they were never actually clarified. 
it was obviously uh, manipulating the balance sheet and this was a reason enough uh, for banking supervision to step in and ensure that uh, the uh, staff uh, were sacked and the tractions cancelled. Uh, but the interesting thing is that uh, although uh, the report uh, from Cyprus uh, was published uh, through the New York Times uh, and Reuters uh, 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 and uh, there a lot of attention paid to it, uh, the uh, Central Bank Supervisory Authority did nothing. But why was that? Uh, there's only a real really uh, one uh, explanation. Uh, the director of the bank, uh, Mr. Provokoulos, uh, who as such uh, is uh, a uh, member director, uh, is on the board of the uh, ECB, and he uh, stretched uh, his uh, protective hand over the director of Boreas Bank. He was, after all, a former member of the bank's board and had received uh, generous loans amounting to millions of euros, and we don't even know whether he's paid them back. So it is, there was uh, clearly a conflict of interest uh, in banking supervision in Greece, uh, link, links to a bank in Cyprus, and uh, the ECP board were fully aware of it, uh, and they did nothing, but they simply let Provopolis do as he pleased. That's the first part of the story. Uh, uh, the uh, next step uh, in uh, the links between uh, the Greek Central Bank and um, uh, the uh, Lyki Bank was in, in March 2013. Uh, Lyki Bank uh, uh, was uh, already insolvent. Uh, it couldn't really be funded. They couldn't fund themselves anymore. The bank has needed a bailout or something similar and uh, the government uh, was in trouble and they couldn't fund the bank either. And then you'll remember the Euro group came along and said, well, now we'll do something uh, different in Cyprus to what we've done in all the other crisis uh, countries. We'll have a bail-in instead uh, of a bail-out uh, to the detriment of the depositors. And I won't go into whether this was a good idea or not, but what's important is that once it became clear that uh, the uh, Euro uh, uh, group uh, were imposing a bail-in, uh, they uh, automatically created a run on the bank, so people went to withdraw their savings and capital controls had to be introduced. And in order to uh, avoid the bank run spreading to Greece, uh, the uh, Cypriot banks had to be forced uh, uh, to Uh, separate uh, Greek uh, assets uh, from Cypriot assets uh, and that made up about uh, a half of the assets and they had to sell uh, the Greek assets so something odd uh, happened. Uh, the money uh, was uh, given, the assets were given uh, to Piraeus Bank uh, and uh, the Piraeus Bank uh, uh, only had to pay uh, 523 million euros. Uh, the net asset value, assets minus uh, liabilities because uh, uh, the uh, loans uh, uh, taken out vis-a-vis -vis the uh, ECB were deducted. Uh, so the net value was 7.9 million. And so the Piraeus Bank uh, didn't even pay a tenth uh, of uh, uh, the value of, of what they actually got. So the interesting thing was that it's not just that uh, the Piraeus Bank uh, could uh, make uh, a profit, uh, but... Uh, uh, this uh, was a way of getting uh, the money uh, for the loans uh, that were taken out and not paid for by the director of Leica Bank. And then in the next uh, quarter, uh, there was a, a profit of 3.4 billion euros. In other words, the forced sales uh, of uh, the Greek uh, assets uh, uh, ensured uh, that the Cypriot banks uh, uh, sustained an immediate uh, loss. Uh, the technical insolvency of the Bank of uh, Cyprus was then achieved, and that was uh, the uh, legal conditions uh, for a bail-in uh, to be imposed. The ECB uh, answered uh, a question from MEP Giegold uh, uh, saying uh, that uh, this was just an accounting profit. Uh, there were uh, so uh, many rotten credits in it that uh, it would only have been 24 million 
uh, euros, but that's misleading because uh, the risk analysis to the EC that the ECP is referring to says that the MEP th assumes the MEPs are too uh, stupid uh, to read it, but it was drawn up by PIMCO, uh, which is a consultancy firm which uh, assessed uh, the value of uh, Cypriot assets. Uh, and they concluded that uh, for the worst case scenario, a maximum amount uh, of non-performing loans, uh, rotten credits, rotten loans, uh, they said that it would at least be, uh, it would be valued at uh, 2.4 billion. So according to PIMCO's analysis, period, this bank uh, got uh, uh, 1.9 billion euros. Our experience shows that when so much uh, money is uh, uh, involved uh, without any legal control or any supervision from an institution, when so much uh, money is uh, transferred from one institution to another uh, across national borders, uh, the uh, there's pra practically 100% certainty that there is corruption involved. Uh, so that's 1.9 billion. You know, you could have uh, four or five million uh, uh, given uh, backhanders uh, given to people here and there without anybody noticing. And the whole issue of the forced sale didn't uh, just uh, happen between uh, two negotiating rounds of the Eurozone in March, but the whole issue of the forced sale was cobbled together by a team in the ECB under the uh, leadership of uh, a Greek a lawyer. It was uh, planned in detail. You can uh, prove this. Uh, uh, by looking at an internal memo of the ECB that I got hold of. Uh, this ECB official uh, had uh, close uh, personal ties to the same law firm uh, dealing with the legal affairs of Piraeus Bank. So the ensuring uh, questions uh, about uh, a possible conflict of interest uh, will receive such an evasive answer from Mr. Draghi, that uh, this uh, affair should actually be investigated by the public uh, prosecutor. Mr. Draghi basically said, yes, Mr. Athanasio did have ties to uh, the law firm in the past, but it's a long a time ago, and uh, at the time of the transaction of the Cypriot uh, um, deal, the, then the, there were ties uh, were no longer in force, so that they, he was no longer working for uh, that firm, so that you, you couldn't come up with a weaker excuse. Uh, the problem is that uh, even if uh, there is a if there were to be a public prosecutor interested in investigating, he couldn't because there's no legal basis, because uh, anything which is done by uh, officials uh, under Troika is done in a legal vacuum of the intergovernmental uh, agreement uh, and under diplomatic immunity, so they cannot even be prosecuted, even if somebody wanted to. Uh, now, on the abuse of power for uh, the uh, in the area of the loans, uh, which is very much linked to this, uh, uh, this uh, happened before uh, this uh, rather shady deal uh, in uh, uh, Cypriot assets. Uh, the Likey Bank. Uh, was bankrupt as a result of the, the haircut. Uh, but the insolvency was not fully uh, deployed because uh, the Cypriot government wanted to avoid that. Uh, and miracle of miracles, uh, uh, the uh, European Central Bank uh, gave uh, the Likey Bank uh, 10 um, million euros emergency uh, liquidity assist assistance uh, against absurd collateral. Uh, for example, the fitness club uh, was used as uh, collateral. Uh, the gym of the staff of the Likey Bank was used as collateral. collateral. Uh, and the interesting uh, thing is uh, that uh, this uh, Ella, over the course of a year, uh, led to the major financial institutions, in other words, the banks and insurance companies are of the Eurozone, they could withdraw their uh, cash, uh, which they'd uh, parked uh, in a Cypriot uh, banks uh, with inflated interest rates. A lot of their deposits uh, of the major institutions uh, in uh, the Eurozone zone were able to withdraw uh, an amount of, again, 10 million euros. It was only afterwards, uh, because uh, when the bail-in became possible, 
Th those who uh, remained uh, uh, as uh, depositors in Cypriot banks uh, had to pay more. Uh, the bail-in was more expensive as a result. Uh, and then in March 2013, the ECB changed its tune. and uh, The ECB threatened the Cypriot government with the blocking of the ELA. Uh, it did this because the government initially refused to accept the forced uh, the, the bail-in and the forced sale of the Greek assets in Cypriot banks. This was the first abuse of the ELA for political uh, uh, pur purposes. Uh, uh, it, either it was illegal to grant a ELA over the course of a year, and then the ECB would have to bear responsibility, or they should have continued it and uh, not linked it uh, to a political changeover, but they did precisely that. Uh, Cyprus was a kind of experiment, uh, a dry run for what happened in the summer in Greece. Uh, the uh, ELA credits, uh, ELA loans uh, were used uh, uh, to force Syriza uh, to do what the Troika wanted. And then the ECB uh, is supposed to avoid a bank runs. Uh, the point of the ECB, the reason it was set up, was to uh, uh, avoid bank runs happening. So this was a clear infringement of the ECB's mandate, in my opinion, a blatant breach of the law, which should be brought before the Court of Justice. And I'm surprised that there has been no case brought so far, because after all, the uh, mandate uh, uh, obliges uh, the ECB to ensure that the payment system runs smoothly in all of the member states. That's one of their main tasks. And uh, by blocking uh, the further ELA for uh, the uh, Greek banks, they achieved precisely the opposite. Hundreds of thousands of Greeks who couldn't withdraw their money. Many of the companies couldn't sell their merchandise, so the payment system broke down. And uh, this decision uh, to uh, limit the ELA uh, is uh, clearly uh, a case uh, of uh, uh, political manipulation. And you can see that uh, uh, by looking at the timing. And uh, the uh, uh, Greeks uh, were presented uh, with the demands of uh, their uh, debtors at the same time. And there are two ways uh, of uh, achieving uh, the aims of the blackmail. Extending the ELA would uh, be used uh, to fund uh, the Greek state. It would be an illegal way of funding the state. Uh, and uh, in another member state, uh, this was happening already uh, for several years. Uh, so that is wrong. But in Greece, it was uh, factually wrong because the ECB uh, in its function of a, a supervisory body ensured uh, that uh, the uh, Greek banks were able to uh, hold uh, 50,000 euros in estate uh, loans. And the banks uh, had uh, 25 billion uh, euros in loans, which they granted uh, under a state uh, guarantee. So it's a total of 40 billion, but that's all. All the assets of the Greek uh, banks uh, amounted to 400 billion. So the argument didn't even uh, stand up. And the second argument, and this was the uh, tool they used, that the Greek uh, banks didn't uh, have enough uh, collateral uh, to justify further ELA credits. Uh, but this argument uh, did not stand up uh, as uh, Martin Sandbu of the Financial Times uh, approved because uh, the ECB uh, took uh, all uh, the assets uh, uh, of the uh, Greek uh, banks uh, and only assessed them at half value. And at the same time, uh, they uh, said that the banks uh, were capitalized to the tune of 18 uh, percent of their assets. Uh, so for a uh, uh, su supervisory uh, uh, purposes, uh, they took uh, 82 percent of the assets. Uh, but uh, for anything else, it was only 50 percent. And I think that that can prove that, that the ECB board, in the case of Greece, uh, in um, granting uh, ELA has abused its political power and this is a case that should not be accepted. Thank you.